Hi, I'm Laverne Cox, and you're watching Out at the Center. Let's do it. Mara Keisling, Executive Director of the National Center for Transgender Equality, based in Washington, D.C., came to New York to speak about the recent activity of this advocacy organization. Let me tell you about me. Uh, I'm Mara Keisling. I'm a 48-year-old uh, Pennsylvanian, apparent, a vegan, lesbian-identified, trans woman, Libra. I was the first executive director of the National Center for Transgender Equality, and I'm one of the founders. There were a lot of us, including some folks in New York, who were doing federal policy specific to transgender people from around the country. We focus on federal policy and issues of national significance for transgender people. We believe in order to do our work well for transgender people, we have to be an LGBT organization, and we take that very, very seriously. We will not leave gay people behind. We act as a sort of a clearinghouse on trans issues. We do a lot of media. I'm now averaging probably two or three interviews per day. Um, very importantly, you won't see my name most of those times because we want as much as possible to have lots of different people doing it. So we'll pitch stories, stories get pitched to us, and wherever possible we try to get the right people. We've been working really, really hard to get more people of color out in front, more youth out in front, more seniors out in front. Because for too long, when you see a transgender person, it's, it's somebody who looks like me. Anybody who um, wants to identify as transgender is transgender enough for us. Basically, if I had to define it, I'd define it as, as anybody who faces violence, discrimination, or disrespect because of their gender identity or sexual orientation. Many of you will know that transgender people, well, first of all, most of us don't have health insurance because so many of us don't have jobs or have jobs that don't have health insurance or have other financial responsibilities that mean having health insurance is virtually impossible. Those of us who do have health insurance generally have an exemption for transgender-related care. Now, it's, it's often thought by the public as, as being a surgery exemption. They won't pay for a the surgery, you know, the. Um, this is a big joke in our office. There's lots of different kinds of the surgery. But anyway, we're trying to fight these insurance exemptions because they're more than just the surgery. There's three categories of, of problems that it causes trans people. Number one is uh, transition sorry, transition-related medical care. In fact, it does include a bunch of different kinds of surgeries, but it also includes hormones, lab tests, mental health tests, prosthetics, um, other kinds of things. And even the health plans that say surgery is excluded, or however they word it, um, the best one is uh, the Veterans Administration calls it genital, genital reorientation surgery or something. Um, I have genital disorientation. So, it's fun at parties, but otherwise it's, it's no good. So, number one is the transition-related care. Number two is any sex-specific care. You'll hear a lot about trans people. Like, I just had a PSA a prostate exam done. Um, that's something I'll need to, well, now I, I scored really well, so I don't have to do it again. But. Um, that's something that I might need, and my insurance company might say, whoa, whoa, we have you down as a female, and you're getting a prostate exam. We can't pay for this. Um, or they might do that with me with gynecological care or mammograms. You just never know, and that's a problem. And then the third, we have people who are just ruled out of health care altogether. Um, this particularly happens in some of the government-sponsored programs like VA, TRICARE, um, Medicare, Medicaid, um, et cetera. Um, the most luna lunified um, case I ever heard about this was a, a transsexual woman who was playing softball and broke her arm. And her, she went to the emergency room, had it set in a cast, went home and everything was fine. And then a couple months later she gets, starts getting the letter saying that it was refused payment by the insurance company and it's $7,000 and it's a big deal. Now she won this case, Lam, she went and worked with Lambda Legal and she won. But here's how loony the system can be with these exemptions. The reason that they said she, that, that she, they wouldn't cover it is because it was transsexual related care because had she not been a transsexual, she would not have been playing in a lesbian softball league. So clearly that's 
transsexual care. Now, that, that's kind of crazy, and she won, but that kind of stuff happens a lot, a lot to folks. People just turned away and being told, look, your insurance isn't going to pay for this, and, or we won't, you know, we're the Veterans Administration, we won't take care of you. Healthcare access, in particular around insurance. That's the one we're really right now looking for a really big chunk of foundation support to try to get up and running with actual staff members doing that because more and more insurance companies are coming to us and saying we want to do right by this. More and more LGBT organizations and other nonprofits are coming to us saying we want to do this right, how do we do it? And there's not really good models for how to do it yet. Um, I have an appointment with the Aetna people in, in two weeks to talk about how they can do it um, better, but we need some real serious staff on this. And that's all for this excerpt from Out at the Center. If you want to see the full show, check it out on our website at gaycenter.org slash out. Until next time, I'm Laverne Cox. Stay in the love.